Hi YouTube, I just want to take a moment before we turn to the topic at hand to explain my intentions in making this video and to announce that at the end of this video is a short channel update and forecast which you can stick around for if that interests you. Because race and IQ is such an integral part of the race realist position, I think it would be prudent to consider what intelligence is, what an IQ is, the history and relevance of these constructs, and discuss some of the shortfalls of psychometric testing. I'm not doing this as an attempt to discredit the science, but to provide context and nuance to the discussion on race realism as we go forward. Something to keep in mind during this video is that race realists tend to conceptualize IQ as an accurate, reliable, objective measurement of one's intellectual capacity or functioning. They further generally consider intelligence to be predicated upon a monolithic general capacity, dubbed the G-factor. Finally, race realists consider IQ assessments to be able to provide strong, if not paramount, predictions about an individual's life outcomes and consider the average IQ of populations to be inextricably tied to the fates of societies. With these notions in mind, let's begin. According to the American Psychological Association, intelligence is defined simply as intellectual functioning. Likewise, they simply assert that IQ tests are measures of one's intellectual performance on standardized testing materials. Of course, the reality is much more complex than this. There exist two dominant theories today which attempt to define intelligence and explicate its function in attempts to more accurately measure and assess it. The first conceptualization was described in 1904 by Charles Spearman and attempts to identify intelligence as being derived principally from one underlying factor of general competence, called the G-factor. This is predicated upon the notion that individuals who are able to perform well on one type of test will generally go on to perform well on a variety of tests. The second conceptualization of intelligence is known as the multiple intelligences theory. It was described by Howard Gardner in 1983 and attempts to better explain the phenomenon of intelligence as a series of seven interconnected and interdependent competencies. Though both theories have significant, often oppositional, support within the field of psychology, it would appear that the truth is somewhere in the middle. In 2012, a study found that intelligence is a product of multiple anatomically distinct cognitive systems, each having their own respective capacity which give rise to the emergent property we call intelligence in our species. Although these systems synthesize into an overall competency which can be measured by G-loaded tests, it is decidedly the case that intelligence is not a monolithic psychological phenomenon. This has significant implications for how culture, environment, and motivation influence intelligence. IQ tests originated in the early 1900s, when Alfred Binet used such assessments to identify children with learning disabilities. Since then, these types of tests have been adapted to assist schools, police departments, the military, parents, and students in determining appropriate policies and decisions regarding their particular sets of interests and needs. However, there have been problems identified with these tests and their application. And though much has been done to further standardize and render IQ tests appropriate and objective, these persist. One of the largest issues is in how the tests are administered and the conditions in which children are assessed. It would appear that a great many children are assessed inappropriately, which confounds drawing any conclusions about our societies as a whole. For example, minority children exhibit talent or potential in ways which are often not recognized by teachers, who tend to have different cultural characteristics and mannerisms than their students. In this light, it's further concerning that minority children such as African Americans and Native Americans have historically been more likely to be diagnosed with special needs or learning disabilities. To clarify what I'm getting at here. It seems that the theories behind IQ tests and intellectual assessments are likely pretty good, but when it comes to actually giving the test, there are significant problems. IQ tests are supposed to be, according to many race realists, highly accurate and thus have very good predictive value concerning the life outcomes of individuals. But does this hold up? Once again, the conversation isn't that simple. The truth is somewhere between yes and no, and maybe. 
It is undeniable that institutions have long used assessment tests to determine policy and actions concerning the employment or capacities of individuals, and that these tests have predictive power and distinct utility. However, in recent years it's become readily more apparent that although psychometric testing is a useful and well-supported field, there are significant doubts about the veracity of the historical data collected through psychometric tests. For instance, it's long been assumed that IQ tests were highly predictive of job performance. This has turned out to be more tenuous and less robust than once believed, with meta-studies showing that connections between higher IQs and better job performance are unsubstantiated. Additionally, when we control for personality traits, socioeconomic status and motivation, and reassess the predictive power of IQ, it becomes no more impressive or robust in its indications of overall life outcomes than any of these other variables. Again, that's not to say that IQ tests are not useful, relevant, or accurate, but these recent discoveries have cast extreme doubt on the notion that IQ tests are paramount predictors or indicators of overall life outcomes. This is an incredibly brief touching on an incredibly complex topic, and there is a lot more I haven't covered which further complicates this discussion, but I think this has been a good introduction to the topic. Let's revisit the race realist position, that IQ is an accurate, reliable, objective measurement of one's intellectual capacity or functioning, that intelligence is predicated upon a monolithic general capacity dubbed the G-factor. Finally, that race realists consider IQ assessments to be able to provide strong, if not paramount, predictions about an individual's life outcomes, and consider the average IQ of populations to be inextricably tied to the fate of societies. All of these assertions are partially supported, like almost every aspect of the race realist position. However, there are major caveats to every one of these assertions, and where they make the strongest claims, there seems to be the most nuance, disagreement, and doubt. Overall, IQ tests are a well-substantiated and well-evidenced tool for assessing individuals, but are not particularly more impressive at predicting life outcomes than other variables like SES, personality, and motivation. And, their results cannot be used currently to come to any conclusions specifically concerning racial disparities, as the historical and current data suffer from application misconduct in the form of poor controls of conditions and testing, inherent bias in the tests and in the test administrators, and cultural insensitivity. The next topic we'll approach in part four of this Race Realist series is race and IQ and race and crime. That's a ways out, so for now, enjoy this channel update and forecast.